Hey there everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Say hello to Calyrex Iliapu. We've been watching the buds for a while. Finally in bloom. Really happy to see that. Been a long time. These only bloom once a year, so it's just wonderful to see them again. Lots of buds on the way. You look at these sheaths, you can see inside here the little buds poking out. Got some over here as well. And this one. This one's kind of standing straight up. Got some in here as well. So yeah, we got Rex flowers on the way, on the way. We're going to have lots of them in bloom at the same time. I expect these guys will last about two weeks. Not much longer than that. So they just opened fully, I would say, yesterday, maybe the day before. So they're just freshly open. Um, our Orchid Society meeting today is... Uh, our topic is LED lighting, or artificial light, growing under lights. So I'm going to bring my Rex in, I'm also going to bring my um, Spider Farmer LEDs. I'm just going to bring one in, just to show them, hey, I can grow really highlight plants using these LED panels. So the way the, the light that the light setup that I have is that you can see one side of the tent is transparent. So from sunrise until about 11, 11.30, uh, the plants get natural light. In the summer, it's really great. And then as the sun kind of goes over the building and shadow falls over the plants in here, then the lights kick on and take it around take it on to about 6 p.m. and then they switch off and so they they get about they get a varying amount of light throughout the year depending on the length of day because when sunrise is earlier obviously they get more light in the morning but I don't have to adjust the photo period of the um, lighting the artificial light because the Sun kinda does it for me All right, let's check out this Catlea walkeriana. We've been trying to figure out what this thing has been doing. Um, it's got roots now. And this growth thing is um, still puzzling me. I don't really know what I'm looking at. Uh, try not to break anything as I'm getting down here. That's as close as it'll let me get. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're looking at. So many people have said it's a spike. Hopefully it is. That would be great. Ah... <sighs> Love these guys. What else we got? Just want to show you real quick. Catacetums are just absolutely in. They have kicked it up into full gear. I noticed earlier this week that my uh, Signoches Cooperi, the roots have reached the bottom of the pot. Well, at least a couple of them have. Down here, see? So, I gave it a little, a little spray earlier this week. Just kind of dampened the sphagnum a little bit. And, um, I gave everybody a little bit of a, just a little, kind of a little surface misting. I got a little moisture on their roots. Not a, not a drench or a soak by any means, but... Kind of give everyone just a little taste of water. No perceived ill effects. 
Oh, also, I got my report back from the lab, so you guys were absolutely right. This plant did have, or it did test for um, Fusarium oxysporum. The pieces that I cut off, I sent to the lab. They confirmed it, and of course when I made the cut, you could still see that purplish ring, so I assume the plant is still carrying it maybe it's still growing inside I did give it a thigh mill treatment um, a couple of days after I made the cut but I realized I didn't do it according to the label instructions the label instructions say you mix it at four teaspoons per gallon and then you soak the plant in it for 10 to 15 minutes and I only soaked for about five minutes so I'm going to redo thigh mill treatment today and you know, the, the question becomes, well, this plant, you know, this is very likely not the only one that has it, right? Um, some plants, like this one, they have these kind of telltale signs, these little necrotic spots on the pseudobulb and on the leaf. And... Um, so I, I'm going to treat a few different plants, actually. Um, it's, it's just kind of hard to imagine that, you know, only one would have it. You know, I, I would assume that, it, you know, s since they're in rocks now, it would be a little bit harder for, the, for a fungus to take hold since they dry out a lot more quickly. Also, what I've read... The literature says that uh, Fusarium thrives in 25 to 30 degrees C, around in there, 25 and above. And my temperatures are a little bit cooler than that. My nights are 18, my days are 27, 28. So I'm, you know, I, I'm not seeing horrible, horrible damage. And I guess the bottom line, what I'm getting to is that, you know, people, they're always, you know, I always am told you need to separate, you need to isolate, that kind of stuff. And I just don't have, I just can't. There's no, what am I going to do? You know, put it on my coffee table. So um, I'm going to treat what I, what I have. And I'm just going to keep doing that, what I'm doing. And um, hopefully, at the very least, you know, the plants seem to be pretty resistant to it because, I mean, they look pretty good. Uh, but I honestly don't know how many plants have it. Um, it, who knows, right? Who knows? As long as they're making larger and larger growths, I would assume that they're doing okay. But, yeah, my eyes are definitely looking for signs of that and um, maybe every once in a while I'll just take off a couple back bulbs of some different plants and just see see what there is so that is all I've got for you today just do a quick seedling look Hardiona here tree any AC Burridge, it's got a new growth push in there. All the little seedlings. I um, bought some Epsom salts and put a teaspoon of Epsom salts in distilled water and a gallon of distilled water and sprayed everything with that solution this week to give see if there's a magnesium deficiency I'm trying to figure out um, why some of the leaves have these yellow patches if that's related to magnesium if that's something else is that a fusarium symptom but a lot of my plants have that and I'm wondering if it's a nutritional thing so All right, I'm gonna show you my clavia and my phalaenopsis one more time, and then we will call it a day. All right, 
Clavia Miniata looking wonderful. Welcoming in the spring. And then the Phalaenopsaurus. A massive fowl here. Finally opening up its seventh bloom. Looking pretty nice as well. For the windowsill, I also moved a couple of my paths out here to try to give them a little bit more attention. Repotted them in a Gubbler fine mix with some sphagnum on top. So, I don't know, who knows, maybe I can help them recover. Alright guys, that's it for my green pets for this week. Have a great one and I'll see you next time. Bye.